In Investing 101 today, joining me now is Matt Shapiro, president of MWS Capital. Love having you on the show. Thanks, Angie. You do such a good job of breaking down challenging topics. So in Investing 101 today, I'd love to have you talk about what beginner investors should be doing right now in the market. Well, I, you know, Investing 101 is actually one of the crucial things about investing. Uh, viewers out there, a lot of people can't even get past that first part of how do you invest? How do you get your money going? The first thing is get your money in a large brokerage company, your Charles Schwab's, your Vanguard's, your Fidelity's. Right there, you can actually start to invest your money with all the online tools and really global investments. All are really available, available to you once you get going with one of these firms. That brings me to my next question. There's so many places to park your money, so many investment choices out there. So how should people go about picking where they want to invest? Well, your first stop is you have to decide how much stocks you want, how much fixed income, or other kind of investments you want to invest in. The most conservative investments out there are bank deposits and CDs. More aggressive would be treasury bills, investing in the treasury market, or a mutual fund that is geared towards investing in treasury-only securities. Now, of course, the yields aren't that high, 2%, maybe 3% in the most conservative investments, but at least you're doing something with your money. 2% is better than no percent. <laughs> Correct. So Correct. even if you, you have to do the bond market, then so be it. And it tends to be one of the safer plays, as you mentioned. Correct. Then once you want to tiptoe out into the actual stock and in, uh, investment market, there you can expect higher returns. Conservative stock investments, ones that pay bigger dividends like your Pfizer's, your GE's, they are stocks, they do move around like the Dow Jones Industrials, but they're typically blue chip companies with long histories of paying dividends. Those you can expect to get about 7% or so a year. Again, you'll use a good mutual fund or invest in um, a group of stocks. Nowadays, commissions are about $5 to buy 1,000 bucks a stock, 2,000 bucks a stock, 10,000 bucks a stock. So it's all very efficient. Uh, of course, many companies you've heard have index products that have uh, maybe five basis points in management expenses. So you're able to effectively diversify once you get involved with one of the large, sophisticated brokerage companies globally across the markets. You do want to watch those fees though, Matt. Yes, you do, but don't go too overboard. So for instance, one trend I've noticed, mm -hmm. especially in 401ks, is that the menu of choices has kind of been shrinking into the same index products because they quote unquote have the lowest fees. What people then overlook are more specialized funds, skilled managers that actually do ultimately beat the market or provide other um, benefits to investors such as lower volatility in the funds they manage or specialized choices. For instance, in Asia, the Pacific region, which is very hot, where you know an index fund maybe is not the best choice and you want a skilled active manager. Right, so right now, what are you doing with your money? Well, the market's high and it's doing well. So I think a lot of investors are asking, when does this end, will it end? So I'm looking a lot at the economy and the fundamentals of the economy are strong. The risk to stocks are typically a credit bust, and credit is very sound and solid, or an exogenous uh, boom in, in the economy. The economy is doing well, but we're certainly not overheated. So the outlook is good. Now, is the, it has the market had a good run? Of course it has. So oftentimes, balanced portfolios between stocks and bonds, I think, are really the order of the day and the right prescription going forward over the next year. If stocks are gonna do so well, it's okay to have, say, 60% in stocks and the rest in somewhat more conservative fixed income because the, the entire account will do more than well in this kind of environment. Well, thank you for joining us for Investing 101, Matt. Thanks, Angie.